welcome to this third session of the NGAIN instrumentation flash webinar. So the topic of this presentation today will be the specific algo float for the BGC application, so the Provo CTS4. Um, but before talking about the topic of the webinar, a few words about the Argo program. So if you're here today, you are probably a minimum familiar with the Argo program that is now a reference for all ocean observation program and network in the world. Uh, this network includes now uh, up to 4,000 floats deployed by a large range of countries. And the program is an example as a successful international cooperation. And it has proved uh, ability to develop common data management system and all the data and metadata are shared all over the world. So you can see here uh, the map uh, showing the last location of all the active floats. And you can see there is nearly 4,000 uh, units. Um, and for the future of Argo, some new goals have been defined by the, the, the Argo steering team. Uh, this new goal is to increase the marginal seas and polar area deployment, um, to explore the deep ocean through the deep Argo program, and also the extension to BGC uh, uh, measurement. Uh, and for all these objectives, NK is able to provide some techni technical uh, uh, solution through our, the large range of, of products. Before dealing specifically with BGC Argo, a few words about the basic mission of an Argo float. So a float has to operate for a minimum of four years and cycle every 10 days with a scheme of spending approximately nine days parked at 1000 decibel, then descend to 2000 decibel to start the ascent profile with the acquisition of different variables. For the core Argo mission, these variables are pressure, temperature, and salinity. Data are then transmitted by floats through Argos 2 or Iridium satellite system and collected by Global Data Assembly Center called the GDAC, where, where different level of quality control called the QC are applied. So it starts from near real time in automatic mode up to additional level that requires uh, scientific expertise and delays can be up to one year. And we talk about the delay in mode. Then all data will be available and shared to all scientific community. This data will provide, are providing richful information to observe ocean climate changes in the upper ocean with variability from months to decade, including heat and freshwater storage. So now the question is, okay, what is specifically BGC Argo? So I will briefly answer to this by a simple comparison between the core and the BGC Argo mission. So the core Argo mission, as I already said, has a rigid scheme of 10 day cycle period and making profiles from 2000 decibel by sampling pressure, temperature, and salinity with a typical number of points of 110 points per profile. This agreement on mission scheme was for sure one of the key points that ensured the success in sharing data and developed the array at a large scale. However, more than 15 years ago, some scientists have clearly identified interest for the platform to embed additional sensors for new variables acquisition. These variables were in the beginning, so diesel oxygens and chlorophyll A, backscatter, irradiance, and several other optical measurements. After 15 years of development and deployment, BGC Argo is now a kind of sub program included in global Argo program. But the need in terms of sampling the water column cycle period and variable is clearly quite different from the core Argo mission and, and the need of physical oceanography. So the platform has to offer the flexibility to sample uh, the water column differently, to prepare mission scheme with multi-profile cycle and to treat and store a larger set of data because of uh, uh, additional sensor. So uh, BGC Argo uh, community has now established a list of viable required for a large set of studies uh, and, and, and topic. And we can see on the map, so, uh, this map illustrates uh, what all the, the active BGC float at the moment. So some of them have only uh, a few variables and, and very few of them are uh, equipped with the six variables. So here's an array coming from uh, the BGC Argo website showing some of the scientific topic that could be addressed through the variable included in program. I will not detail here all the content, but one point is very clear. Many of these variables have interesting range of signal 
in shallower area than 2000 decibar uh, of the core argo skin. These signals require also ability to sample the colon with higher resolution than for core argo mission. The cycle period of 10 days is also quite long compared to the time scale of observed phenomenon. It won't be possible to sample a phytoplanktonic bloom with a cycle every 10 days. So for all these reasons, a BGC floats required some flexibility to program the mission scheme and the sampling parameter and treatments of all variables. We can see here that NK has a large set of float depending on mission. And for the BGC mission, the dedicated float is the Provo CTS4. So the Provo CTS4 is the mature float able to acquire all the six variables recommended by uh, BGC Argo. This is the only float at sea today with this full set of sensors. Several units with a full configuration are now at sea, and some more will be deployed in a recent future. Uh, uh, probably six are now, and maybe um, maybe something like 20 to 25 in a recent future. Uh, the CTS4 uh, so, uh, also offers the advantage to be a self-ballasted float, meaning it will deal with any kind of density condition. So you can deploy the float without any physical action on the float ballast, if you change your mind regarding the, the deployment area. The float dimension offer also the possibility to embed a high battery pack, and that is very useful for demanding sensor. The last point, the electronic architecture is based on two electronic boards, one for the float and one from the, for the sensor. This offers some high sampling possibility and, and, and power to store and treat the data and also the flexibility for, for the programmation of the, of, the, of the mission. The reliability has now reached a very good level considering the, the complexity of further and, and we are based now on something like more than 200 units at sea with very good level of, of reliability. To illustrate this flexibility, a view on an example of cycle uh, that includes three independent profiles with specific parking and profile depth and specific duration for H. So this example is probably uh, uh, has no interest from a scientific point of view. It's just here to, to show the possibility. Uh, and obviously, all this kind of scheme can be pre-programmed and, and, and will not require some human action after deployment. So it means you can set up uh, the mission before the deployment and then let the float uh, cycle uh, up to the end of this life. Here, you can see uh, uh, the beginning of the parameter set for the, for the first profile. So the user has to choose uh, the number of profile per cycle, so from one to 10. Then you program the day and hour at surface for each, parking and profile depth for each. And this can be repeated up to 10 times, depending on how many profiles per cycle you selected. Here is another example of a six variable probability is for trajectory. We can see that after deployment, the cycle period was very short and GPS position and transmission are very closed. Then by telecommand, user has changed the cycle period to several days and distance between each location has increased. So this characteristic is now essential as all BGC Argo floats will have to contribute to the core Argo mission by realizing a deep profile at 2000 decibel every 10 days. Uh, so this is really a strong recommendation from the Argo steering team. By this way, you can combine high frequency profiling uh, for BGC application, and you can also provide the core Argo data set every 10 days at the max pressure. Now, still to illustrate the flexibility, we can see on this time series uh, coming from the LOV website, uh, that with telecommand at some period, this float has realized some deep profile. Uh, this illustrates the ability to change a mission scheme depending on seasonality and interesting signal presence. Then regarding the, the sampling of the water column, so in one profile, we can see here that water column is divided into five zones with specific sampling rate, power mode, and data treatment per sensor and per zone. For transmission. So the flexibility is really maximum and enabled to make accurate focus on all BGC sensor signal 
that is required, obviously, for good science. You can also choose uh, the best compromise between the higher resolution and the lower volume of data to transmit for operational cost management. So typically here in, in shallower zone, resolution can be programmed at higher level. Float will transmit all raw data with partial resolution of 20 centimeters and, and probably 10 in the future. And in deeper zones, if signal requires less, solution, less resolution, you can reduce the number of transmitted points to save energy and also to reduce the profile transmission cost. So the choice for the power mode uh, per zone and sensor also enable uh, the best compromise between the resolution and the energy optimization. I mean, you don't need to keep a sensor powered on if, it knows, if, it, if the sensor is not sampled for a long period. So as a sum up, the treatment type uh, applicable uh, are independent per sensor and per zone will really enable the, 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 the best compromise between the need of science and, and the, the longest life expectancy to uh, and the optimization of energy and the transmission cost. Obviously, as uh, the parameter set could seem a bit complex, even if I don't show them uh, today, uh, um, NK will provide uh, full support to prepare the floats. Uh, in addition, the default configuration has been prepared uh, by LOV and Euroago and is a result of several years experimentation and it will cover a, a large range of, of applications. And now here is a publication coming from uh, the authors Nathan Briggs from the, the NOC, National Oceanography Center in Southampton, uh, from Giorgio Delormo from the Plymouth Marine Laboratory. Uh, uh, in Plymouth, <laughs> and Hervé Close, uh, one of the two BGC Argo program co-chair from the uh, LOV, so uh, the French laboratory uh, of, uh, of, of uh, Oceanography of Villefranche in France. And this publication deals with so, the major role of particle fragmentation in regulating biological sequestration of CO2 by the ocean. And one of the key points highlighted by the authors is that analysis came from from, from poor of our BGC floats, as this is the only one able to provide the required flexibility in terms of sampling in both spatial and time resolution. And this will be my uh, last point about uh, the Provo CTS4, as nobody else than our customer can tell why the instrument uh, was useful. So thank you for your attention, and I will probably come back later to discuss about the second BGC platform dedicated to R&D program. Uh, with more more additional uh, variables than the, the six one, and the fourth is the CTS five. And now I will have a check if there is any question. I'm ready to answer. Okay, so it seems uh, the presentation was too fast or maybe too clear, <laughs> probably too fast, and there is no more questions. So thank you very much for your attention, and uh, we'll be we, are, we will be happy to welcome you uh, for the for the, uh, the next webinar. Thank you very much. And goodbye.